I want to talk to you about a president who's making a comeback, a president who went from being relatively insignificant in 2007 to a global superstar in 2008, a president who then endured six years of near apocalyptic predictions about his performance, but who now has proved all of those critics wrong and solidified his place as a leader on the world stage. It is not our nation's 44th president. It's our nation's first president, the man on the U.S. dollar. President Washington is making a comeback. The dollar is back. Sorry, you weren't looking at Washington there. <laughs> now, you might not think to call it a comeback. After all, the dollar's been here for years, but the dollar has not always been in vogue. Back in 2007, Jay-Z displayed euros instead of dollars in a music video that was set here in New York, implying that true ballers don't call shots in dollars, they trade in the more valuable currency of a global marketplace, the euro. That prompted headlines like this one, Jay-Z dissing the dollar. But then the dollar gained unexpected strength as both the global financial and European economic crises drove international investors to seek refuge in the safety of the U.S. dollar and government debt. During that same time, some in the U.S. started to panic, warning of massive inflation that was just around the corner, and a few even predicted a run on the U.S. dollar. But the dollar crisis never came. The little dollar stayed strong and even grew stronger. Just look at this graph of the dollar versus the euro. Based on this trend, the U.S. dollar could soon be on a one-to-one -one par with the euro. And that makes a European vacation a heck of a lot more affordable. Go, little dollar, go. But then on Friday, the dollar had its biggest decline in more than three years, plummeting as the euro rallied. Wall Street responded with markets closing up, way up. Which leads to the question, do we prefer our dollars weak or strong? Joining me now to help answer that is Josh Steiner, head of industry verticals at Bloomberg LP and former chief of staff for the U.S. Department of Treasury during the Clinton administration. And Connie Raza, who is director of strategic research, the Center for Popular Democracy. So weak dollar, strong dollar, what is preferable? Clearly that's, that's a, a, a too blunt way of putting it. Well, the first thing I'd say is if President Washington is grateful, he owes a lot to President Obama. Mm. The reason we're seeing a stronger dollar has to do with the fundamentals of the U.S. economy. As you said, we've been living in an environment where our growth is a lot higher than Europe. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are still low. Unemployment is down, not down as much as we would like, certainly in certain population groups. And inflation is still low. So if you're an investor on the global stage, where would you rather invest? For the last couple of years, it's clearly been in the United States. And so that's why, led to strengthening of the dollar. So then why then was the, the weakening of the dollar relative to the euro on Friday a, a Wall Street boom? You know, these things are very hard to read. And I think what was happening was the Wall, Wall Street was trying to look at Janet Yellen's comments very closely. They were certainly following her comments on the dollar, but they were also trying to understand where the FOMC, where the Federal Reserve Board was going mm -hmm. in terms of interest rates. And the FOMC is trying to balance a couple of things. They have two clear mandates. They need to keep inflation low, but they also want to keep unemployment low. Mm -hmm. And they're constantly trying to balance those two things. And Wall Street's watching to see whether the Federal Reserve thinks that the economy is overheating and is going to need to raise interest rates dramatically quickly. It doesn't appear to be the case, and therefore you saw the markets rallying. Okay, so, so Connie, you know, I, I know for folks who are not, for example, CNBC watchers, they may have just said, what just happened in Nerdland? Why are we talking about this idea of the dollar and of global marketplaces? But, you know, I teased about a European vacation becoming more affordable. But in a real way, for ordinary Americans who are earning wages, what does the strength of the dollar mean one way or the other? The strength of the dollar really um, is tied to the ability of um, people to manufacture in the United States, which means jobs in the United States. And so um, for working Americans and for the economy, the strong dollar really is a, a threat. It, um, it makes it harder to have a tight labor market, which means that um, it's harder for workers to be able to bargain for better wages. And so while it may be that a, a strong dollar means that imports are cheaper, vacations are cheaper, mm -hmm. um, that, that really is only for the people who still have jobs. They're not making more money. And so what we would rather see is a competitive dollar that um, allows for uh, increased employment and for the, um, the, the, the economy to return to 
a full recovery for all of our community. So is, are the policies that would, that would lead to that outcome from your perspective, are those policies that are in the purview of the Fed, in the purview of, I mean, is this in any way related to issues that can be addressed by voters on the ground, or is it really about Fed policy? I mean, in large view, we've been looking at the Fed because the Federal Reserve is able to, as you said, sort of look at the employment and at the inflation rates. And one of the upsides of the strong dollar is that inflation is going to be relatively low. So the Fed can really focus on reaching that full employment mandate and making sure that communities like African Americans who are still in recession are able to enjoy the recovery. Well, well the interest rate decisions that are, you know, we're kind of constantly, every single week, we're wondering, are they going to bump up those interest rates and the impact that that then has for folks who are holding debt of one kind as opposed to likely to actually have money in the bank on which they're earning interest, right? So that's particularly communities of color, more marginal communities. Do you have reason to think that Yellen will behave any differently than her predecessors in this, in this role around these decisions? Well, as I said before, I think what she's looking at is certainly a concern about the long-term unemployed. And the fact that the unemployment rate is higher in the African-American community should be of concern to everyone, mm -hmm. not just the African-American yep. community, to all Americans. And I'm sure she is focused on that. At the same time, it's important to keep in mind, as you suggested, that the people who suffer the most from high inflation rates are those people who are on a fixed income, yep. right? If you're an elderly person and you have a pension, inflation's a killer. Mm -hmm. If you're someone who is on a low income and you're shopping at Walmart, Inflation and a weak dollar is very damaging mm -hmm. because you're going in and you're buying things which are made in Vietnam and Cambodia and Bangladesh, and the strong dollar is clearly helping you. Mm. And by the way, the strong dollar is helping you at the pump. One of the reasons gasoline Gas prices gas. are so low mm. today is not just because of falling oil prices. It's also because the dollar is so strong. Oil is sold globally on a dollar basis. Yep. The strong dollar is helping us keep prices low. Josh Steiner and Connie Rosa, thank you so much for being here. And still to come this morning, Starbucks, SAE, and Kendrick Lamar. It seems like just about everyone is talking.